Hello everyone, and welcome to today's episode from Learn Tech Global on MS Inspira. And as you can see, we've got the new rebranding in the trailer. Hope you all are excited. My name is Simon MQC. I'm going to be passing it over to Dawood uh, Ajinkia. We've got, you know, everyone here today. Uh, uh, okay, and we have Gomo doing his session. So hopefully you all enjoy Omkar and Ajinkia is going to be leading this. So hope you all are excited. And yeah, without further ado, hello everyone. <laughs> Anyone, anyone want to speak? Hello, everyone. Thanks yep. for joining. Uh, I'm Unkar. Yeah, it's... And, uh, I really mm -hmm. appreciate you all joining for this session today, like uh, which is hosted by Gomo today. So, that would do you want to speak something about today's uh, session? Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, yesterday was quite fun. We had huge amount of you tuning in. Um, up to 60, 50 people, and over 60 was like, 50, 60 was just con constant on the stream, and it was amazing. All your feedbacks that you provided, um, it just keep all of us going, right? We know you are taking a lot from it. So um, we are excited that today's session is continuing from where we stopped yesterday, because yesterday we exposed you to web app, right? And Homo will be doing something on, you know, .NET and Blazor, which is also web application, but this on Microsoft, you know, uh, main um, framework, which is on, on dot, .NET itself. So I'm sure Homo is an, ex, you know, experienced um, speaker. He, he, he does it right, so you should be expecting something amazing. Thank you so much for tuning in. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and also the like button, all right, whilst you enjoy. Yeah. Yeah, sure. So, so who are new today and uh, who don't know about what, like, uh, if you are joining in today. So, Learn Tech uh, Global is a Friday event. Uh, like, we have speakers gold, who are gold MSPs from all over the globe. So, yesterday, Davuda's session was really great and people really enjoyed it. And thanks for your support, for everything, uh, for joining in every day, 6 to 7, and uh, showing your support. So that really encourages us, that gives us the motivation to do it for all of you. So I'll pass it over to Gomo right now, who is the like who is going to deliver a session on exploring new possibilities with .NET and Blazor. So I'll pass it on to Gomo. Right. Thank you very much for, for that. Let me just quickly share my screen and then you will let me know if you can see my slides. Uh, yeah, we can see them. Okay, so great. Um, hello everyone and welcome to today's live events. My name is Homo Lemo. Uh, people call me Homo for I'm short. I'm a gold Microsoft student partner. And today I'm really excited to be sharing this great technology with you all, Blazor. I've been working with Blazor for quite some time now, and I've done this uh, particular session a couple of um, times and because I feel that it's a good um, way to bring in people into this new technology. So before I, be, before I start, I think it would be best if I briefly explain what .NET is. .NET is an entire software de development platform that takes care of a lot of the heavy lifting for you when you want to build an app. Application frameworks help you build the specific types of apps or workloads and enable you to literally build any app for any platform with any operating system. Each .NET workload shares a common infrastructure and .NET standard library. This means that not only are your .NET skills portable, but your actual code is portable, no matter what you're building. This makes it easy to share reusable components called libraries across the breadth of applications that you build. So like I said, .NET is your platform for building anything that can run anywhere. Microsoft has made significant investments in .NET over the past years, as well as unifying the ecosystem to support building literally anything, from desktop to gaming to the cloud. 
.NET is a general purpose programming platform, which is built to be fast and secure, and it enables all kinds of application scenarios. Once you learn one, you can easily pick up another. This is due to its common sets of innovative languages, tools, and frameworks that you can use to stay productive across all your platforms. Now, let's talk about ASP.NET, which is used to make web apps. Now, ASP.NET has always been a great way for building server-rendered web apps. This is where you would write some .NET code on a server, and that code would generate some HTML or JSON in response to browser requests. This is great for building backends. But if you wanted to build anything on the front end, in the client, on the browser, then you would have to use one of these guys. You would have to use some form of JavaScript. Now, don't get me wrong. There are lots of great things about JavaScript, but there's also some additional cost and overhead while having to bridge these two different developer worlds with different languages, tools, and frameworks. But now, this is no longer the case. You can now write your client-side web app logic using .NET with Blazor. Blazor is a client-side web user interface framework where you get to write .NET and c -sharp instead of JavaScript. You write UI components that encapsulates your UI logic using c -sharp and Razor. You can then share your .NET code with the same uh, assemblies with both the clients and the server. If you got some validation logic, then you can use the same logic on both sides. Blazor is still new and it can't do everything that JavaScript can. So if you still need to um, call into some JavaScript code, you can still do that. You still have access to all the native JavaScript APIs and, uh, and other libraries through a JavaScript interop mechanism. So Blazor is largely made possible by a relatively new open web standard called WebAssembly or WASM. WASM is bytecode for the web. The idea is that you can compile your code to WebAssembly. It can now run in any browser on any platform in near native speeds. So the geniuses over at Microsoft have been working for a while now to get .NET to run on WebAssembly. They have built a .NET runtime in WebAssembly. So how does Blazor work with WebAssembly? The browser provides the core WebAssembly support. On top of that, there's a .NET WebAssembly runtime. We then build our Razor components into normal .NET assemblies. They are then downloaded with the runtime into the browser and then executed directly in the browser. The browser then sends us UI events to the .NET code. Our components run, then they render the UI and Blazor does the hard work of figuring out what exactly changed in our interface. The difference is then sent back to the DOM and updated very efficiently. With .NET, there are two types of hosting. Well, with Blazor, there are two types of hosting models. You can host your Blazor app in multiple ways. We've talked about running your app on WebAssembly, but you can also run your Blazor apps and host them on the server using the very same components. The way a Blazor server app works is your components run on the server, 
then the browser sets up a real-time connection using Signal R with the server, and that's what it uses to handle and send all the UI events that the user is creating. When a button click occurs, this gets sent to the server. The corresponding component runs just like it does on a Blazor WebAssembly app. Then the component renders and then Blazor does the hard work of calculating the difference in the UI. It will then serialize that difference back down the real-time signal R connection back to the browser so it can be applied to, to the DOM. So both Blazor server and, and WebAssembly are supported in .NET Core 3.1. These two models are available for download and ready for production right now. Now, how do you pick between these two different hosting models? Well, there are different pros and cons to each, so it's really up to you to choose. A Blazor WebAssembly app is really a true single page app. It has full interactivity as it runs client side on the user's device. You can use all the users, the user device resources like its CPU, its memory, storage, to the extent that the browser will let you. And it also supports offline usage, meaning that you can build apps that work without a live internet connection. You can also deploy these apps as a static site, which means that you can which means that you don't even need to have .NET running on the server because your app is just a bunch of static files. If I create a Blazor WebAssembly app using .NET and C Sharp, I'm able to host this kind of app on Azure Static um, file hosting or GitHub pages. It's really up to um, to um, you. Blazor server apps have a really small download because the only thing that they need to download is a little piece of infrastructure code that sets up that real-time signal R connection. Your Blazor component code is now running on the server on a full .NET Core runtime. And it has access to all the resources that the server has access to. If you want to talk directly to the database, you can do that from a Blazor server app. Some people really like that your code never leaves the server in a Blazor server app. So how can you get started with using Blazor? I recommend going to blazor.net. That's where you can find all of the getting started instructions and the Blazor docs you're going to want to install .NET Core 3.1 to be able to use Blazor. If you're interested in playing around with Blazor, you will also need to install Visual Studio 2019 for Windows or Mac, or you can even use the VS, you can even use VS Code with the C-Sharp extension. So now let's go into Visual Studio and starts writing some Blazor code. Okay. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna trigger the startup of VS 2019. And you will see that this is what you are met with when you open up the, the app. And all you need to do to get started is to click on create a new project. So we'll wait for that to load up. Then once this has loaded up, you can just search for Blazor and then it'll come up in our list of options over here. Then we click next. Then you're gonna name your app. So I'll just leave it as a Blazor app too. We, cre we create our app 
but before we create a, an app, just um, Omo. Yes. Okay, I'm not seeing your screen. Um, I mean, I think you are doing some demo, right? Yes, yes. Are oh, you not seeing the screen? Yes, um, it's still the PowerPoint slide, so I think you were only sharing that, that slide. Sure, let me just fix that now. Awesome. Uh, sorry about that. Oh, it's I, fine. Thought, I, I got a little excited. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they are excited in the chat as well. Myself, great. super excited. Great, great, great. Okay, so let me just backtrack a um, little bit. So right now I have Visual Studio 2019 opened up and then I'll just click on create a new project. And then what I can do is I can search for the Blazor app template so that I can start writing Blazor code. So I'll click there and then click on next. Then this is where you name your app. I'll leave it as the default name. And then before we create the app, you will see that it's asking us to choose between two hosting models. Those hosting um, models are the ones that I explained earlier on. So you have a server app, which runs and is hosted on the server, and you have a Blazor WebAssembly app, which you can uh, work on and host as a static site. Notice that when I click on WebAssembly, we have two options here in the bottom right. ASP.NET Core hosted, which means that you can have a ASP.NET backend. And you can also have it as a progressive web app. Basically what a progressive web app is, it's an app where, which borders on, on the um, line of being a web app, but also being a native mobile app where you can install the web app onto your phone and it'll work like a native app. And it also works for desktop as well. Also, you will notice that over here, I have the option of choosing a ASP.NET Core hosted backend, which means that Blazor WebAssembly app can be used as client side for any type of application. Whether you're writing Java, whatever you want to do, you can use Blazor WebAssembly as a client side um, technology. So, I'm not gonna cre create um, the app now because I have already um, done one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open this pre-made app that I have here. And we're gonna start actually writing some code. So let's actually try and build something more real world. A budget, hello, allocation UI, which allows people to allocate budgets to certain entities. So an example of a budget allocation UI is this image over here. Okay, it's pictures from the internet. And as you can see, all it has is the name of the entity that you are giving budget to. It has a um, slider and next to the slider, there's a value which represents, which is the numerical representation of the slider next to it. It's pretty simple. It's pretty straightforward. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be, I'm going to try and replicate this UI using Blazor and .NET. So let's minimize that and let's come to our application. And I have it running here just for the sake of um, time. And as you can see, this is pretty much what a standard Blazor app looks like. This is the, um, this is what the default looks like. I haven't done um, um, much changes to it. All I've done is I've added this navigation link on the left here called student partner bonus. So we're going to click on that navigation link. And as you will see, it says, sorry, there's nothing at this address, right? 
So what does this actually mean? What it's telling us is that the application tried to navigate to the forward slash bonus um, URL and couldn't find any pages which matched this, um, this some key. So we need to build a page that will be found at this address. So how do we go about doing that? Let's minimize here. And you'll see on our left, we have our solution explorer. If you look on the pages folder, that's where we will write most of our pages um, for our application. Now, as a web, um, as a web builder, we usually talk about pages. But since now we are referencing .NET and we are referencing Blazor, we are going to be talking about components. Okay, these are called Razor components. So when you think of a Blazor app, think of an app which is made up of multiple components. So we have these components here. If you, if you look under shared, we have the nav menu components. We have the survey prompt compo components. These are just the parts of the different app. So the one that we want to create is the bonus because that's where the link was taking us to. So we'll just call this component bonus. Okay. Let's have that create the, the page or the components. Now, it gives us a bit of code, but we're going to take that completely out and start from scratch. So what we're going to do is, the first thing we have to do is we need to have an add page directive. Basically, what an add page directive is, this is the address of the of the app. Basically what's going to happen is when I navigate to forward slash bonus, whatever I write in this page is going to show up on our screens. So let's actually test that. Let's actually put this here and say we need to do a bit of bonus logic. Let's build that and then we will return to our browser as soon as that's done. And we'll refresh this page. And then as you can see, now we have content on our page, right? There is, there is no error anymore because we have gone to the bonus URL and we are met with this content here. This bonus URL is what will link you to this directive on the top of the page, right? So if I had typed homo, then my site would be, would be found at forward slash homo. That's basically what I've done. Now, let's actually get started with creating our, our budget UI. So I'm gonna add a simple um, header here, and then let's put a horizontal line. So uh, basically, that's what I'll uh, that's what I'll start with. All I've done is I've done a simple um, header tag and H3, and I've shown it on our page, and that's exactly what we'll get here. Okay. So now we can actually start writing this UI code that we see in this image over here. Okay, so the first step is to write some c -sharp code. Okay, now how do you write c -sharp code in a component, right? We would just write the word code and this creates a code block where I can actually start writing some C sharp. Okay. I'm free to write my .NET goodness in my Razor components. So over here is, is HTML um, and other markup, and over here will be my C sharp code. 
that's what the code block is is for. So in this code code block, since we are working with budgets, obviously we would need um, the total budget that we're going to be using for this app. So because Microsoft has so much money, we will be working with one million. That's totally in the context of, of a MU. This can be one million dollars, rands, pounds, rupees, whatever it may. It means just one million. That's our total. And then what we need to do is we need to create a list of people or a list of entities that are going to be receiving this money. If you can see here, we have developers here. We have all of these entities that get a share of the budget. So what we'll be doing is we'll be creating a list, right, of MSPs or Microsoft Student Partners, right? This is just simple um, list markup. And then you'll notice something here that I have used um, the MSP level class, right? And this class, I have already defined it earlier on in my data folder. So let me just open up MSP level. And you will see that I've written a very simple class that just has two properties, a name and amount. The name will represent the entity which will receive the budget and the amount will represent the money that we will allocate to that um, entity. So let's come back to, to here and this markup or this code is basically saying I'm creating a list of type MSP level, which means I'm creating a list of MSPs, okay, or MSP levels, right? And in this list, we obviously need different types of um, MSPs. So what we'll do is, all we will do is, we will assign the name. We just want to assign the name and nothing else, okay? Because we are going to be as assigning the amount later on in our in our UI. So these are the levels that we have as MSPs. Um, very simple markup. Okay, so I have four types of, of um, MSPs here. That's all I'm gonna have for our C-sharp code. Let's go back to our markup, to our UI on the top. And what we'll do is, We'll create a small div here, and I'm gonna pair it up with the predefined CSS um, class. And then inside the class, I'm gonna write some additional c -sharp code. And I know what you were saying is because earlier on, I had just said that the only way to write c -sharp code is if I use this code block. Well, some, sometimes we like to, to um, us .NET devs, we love our C Sharp very much, so we take any chance that we can to um, write it. So anytime we want to write C Sharp in HTML or in a Razor component or a Razor page, all we need to do is we call or we use this at sign, right? That is the Razor syntax. So I'm gonna say, um, for each level in levels, right? I'm referring to this list that I created at the bottom here. For each of those levels, I want three things, right? The first thing that I want is I want to display their name, okay? And then Second thing that I want is I want to display the amount that they will be getting, okay? But I also want to format that amount into a currency, right? 
um, formatting that into a currency. And then the third thing that I want for each level is I want a slider, but I'm not gonna write the code for the slider just yet. I just wanna show you what this looks like at the moment. Okay, so let's come back to our page and then you will see that we have those three things in place for us. We have our names, we have our amounts, and we have the placeholder for our sliders. Okay, so everything is going according to plan. Now, the next step was to obviously create those um, sliders. So a slider, as we know, is an input element of type range because it does represent some sort of range. Okay. And then, um, oops, see. And then we need a max, right? So we need the highest, we need the highest amount that we can assign to the, um, to each entity. And I think the obvious amount is the total. We have a total budget of a million, and that's the amount that we're going to be assigning to each entity. Well, that's the highest, okay? And then we also have a step, right? And in this step, we're going to bring a thousand, okay? A thousand meaning that every time the slider moves, we are going to move the um, slider by a thousand because we don't want to move our slider by one or by 10 because that is too small for our, for our users to um, use because then it'll take up too much time, okay? And then the next step would be to add a bind. A small bind, what are we trying to bind, okay? We are trying to set up a two-way bind between this slider and the amount that we are assigning to it, okay? That's basically what we are trying to undo. It's a very simple, um, very simple step and um, so what we're saying is every time we move the um, slider, the value is going to be binded to the amount that we are assigning to it. So let's just run that and then um, we'll move it along. We'll just, now we have our sliders here. And as you can see, we have working um, sliders. And every time we move, then the value correlates to what we have on our side. And I think this will be a good time to have a, the three minute break for the first form. And I will carry on with, with the rest afterwards. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you so much. So didn't you have an uh, event have tomorrow event. that you want to um, show people? Yes, yes, yes. So to um, today, I am going over the, the very basics of um, Blazor, just to reel you in, to get you excited about the technology. But tomorrow, I will be joining the local Microsoft developer user group in my um, country. And I will be speaking about Blazor, obviously, but then I'm gonna take it up a notch and include some custom vision. Right? Custom vision is one of the cognitive, the cognitive services of um, Azure, one of the AI tools that they have. So I'm going to try and bring these two technologies together. So if you really like um, this specific um, talk, then I would highly recommend that you go to, the, to this page and sign up for this talk as well. We also have a special guest from Microsoft speaking with us. Some of you might recognize this name. So it will be a good um, night of fun and technology.
Thank you very much. That's so, great, you. Gomo. That's great, Gomo. So, so everyone will have a three minutes break yeah. here. Yeah, I, yeah, so I think very quickly before we go on the break, sorry for going out. Um, if you check on the website that we created yesterday together, um, the web app, you remember it wasn't able to run. So I tried to figure out what exactly was wrong. And I realized that yesterday, the stack that we chose, we chose that we wanted Node.js, right? And if you want to run a Node.js app, even the index page, you need some, you know, sort of um, configuration that you need to pull in. For example, you need Express and all those stuff to be able to route your application. So it didn't run yesterday because of the um, stack that we chose. So where you'll be choosing your runtime when you are choosing, when you are selecting, you know, your uh, your runtime for the application you are building, just select that you want a static app. So that way, the index page that we created will get to run. I just pasted the link in the chat, so you can click on it and check it up, and you see everything that we did. I didn't change anything apart from changing the runtime. And yeah, pretty much that's it. So, um, Gomo, Homo, I think you can visit it, and let me paste in your URL for them to follow you on the page. Just check in here. Um, I'm pasting it in the chat. Okay. Okay. Cool. Yeah, so yeah, you, I think Gom Homo Sando is there, so you can follow Homo. Um, he's showing it on the page. Let me also make sure to add. Yeah, you can you can just visit it. Yep. So the meetup link is there, and uh, all the handles of everyone's. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so like if you if you wanna if you wanna try that uh, demo from yesterday from Dao, just check it out. Make sure instead instead of choosing a Node.js. Yeah, yesterday's music would yeah. do. Music. Um. So yeah, we'll, I guess we'll have a three minutes break. Uh, I guess I'll play some music as well. The time is on the screen, so do check out that event. Gomez link. Gomez link is over there. Uh, for that and we'll, we'll be back in three minutes so you can see the time on the screen Yeah, and I'm just pushing the URL to the I mean the URL to the form the form that you're supposed to fill I'm pushing it so you'll be able to check in your browser and just click on the and fill out the form We'll pull it down once you know um, we are starting the session I'm sure it should be there now. CICD is working. Yep. So we will show the attendance. Uh, uh, check there. You will see everything. Now just refresh this page. Homo, you can refresh it and they will have the URL to fill out the form. Yep. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. So that's the URL to the form. Should I increase it a little bit? Uh, yeah, you can. Yep. And that's Homo Limo's social media handle at the top. So Homo, I think that's true. Uh, this is okay. Homo, oh, this is your, your, more hypey. Oh, yeah. Okay, paste it in the chat. Let me just update it so that they follow you with that. Uh, let me do that. Awesome, I have it. Yep. Let me make this even a Twitter a URL so that they can easily cl click on it and then uh, find you which way. Twitter.com slash this. Yeah. He press colon slash slash. Okay. Yeah. I'm glad you want to do it. Um, 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 what? Oh, yeah, I was 
Let's run on these two. Right, we have a question in the chat and yeah it's about pwa so yes you can make a pwa with it uh that's the nice thing about this uh, there was an option that homer showed at the beginning you just take that bo uh, box or you can go the long way and then set up your service workers after but yeah i'd recommend just taking that box So that's the end of our break. Um, so are we, are we um, ready to start again? Salmon, can we summon? Yeah. Yeah, um, please just give them one minute more break. Let's just maintain silence. Let them listen to the tune. Just one more minute. Then we, we start up. Sure. And um, if you refresh the page, FOMO, I have added the URL to your, your link so they can follow you. Okay, great. Thank you, man. Sure, welcome. Should we start? I think I think it's a good time to start. Let's let's start again. Yes. Let's start again. Yes. Okay. Awesome. Uh, okay. So let's um get back to our slider business. Basically, what you've seen here is that yes, the um sliders work and they work quite well, but there's a bit of an issue, right? The values on the ends here, they only update once I let go of my slider, which kind of makes it very impossible to input any specific am amount because we only see the change once we let go. And those of you who are familiar with web technologies knows that this is because of the default um, change events that we have in the browser that will only fire once you let go of our slider. So we need to change that to make that a more smooth, um, a, a, a more um, smooth slider. So what we will do is we're going to add a second bind event here because we want to override the default events. And what we will put is we're going to put on input because we want our 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 value to change the moment the slider starts moving so once we touch our slider that's when our values should change so let's see what that small little um line of code does to our ui let's just wait for this to build and then what we should have is our value seemingly moving with our slider okay so you can see that is very very well well um done now but here's another issue that we are facing we have a total budget of one million okay how do we know when we've reached our our um, total. How do you know if all of this um, counts to one million? I'm sure there are some of you who can easily um, count that, but I'm very bad at math, so I need a reminder to tell me when I've reached um, my um, limits. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to go back to our code 
to our code block. And we're going to add a property. And basically, this property will, um, will store the, array, the remaining amount of money. So we are going to compute this as our total budget minus, so bear with me here as I um, write this, this code. So basically what I'm saying is our remaining amount is going to be equal to the sum of the total um, value of our, change this to I, our remaining amount is going to be equal to, why do I keep putting one instead of I? Okay, our remaining amount is equal to the sum of all the current amounts subtracted from the total budget. So if all our sums are equal to 400,000, if we subtract that from our total, which is a million, then obviously our remaining amounts would be 600,000. But it's not enough that we've defined this property. We also need to show it onto our screens. So basically what we're gonna do is just inside the sum div, we are going to have a remaining tag, right? Okay. And then we're going to replicate that just below so that we'll be able to see how much money we have left. Okay. And then we need to format this to represent a currency. Okay, so let's build that and see what that actually does to our UI. Uh, let's go and refresh the page. And then now we actually have a remaining key. And we will see that as we are assigning values, we are able to see how much money we have left. Okay, now we are getting somewhere. However, if we are to go over our budget, notice that this tag is not stopping. So we can assign a million to everyone, okay? And we have gone over budget by three million because we have gone over our limits. So how do we ensure that this value stops us from assigning more money than we have? We're gonna go back to our code. And what we will do is, we need to change the maximum amount that we can assign per entity. And how we do that is, we're gonna say, okay, we're gonna say, the amount of that specific entity plus the remaining. Okay, so basically, all I'm saying here is, is that my maximum value or the maximum value that I'm allowed to assign is equal to the amount that I've currently assigned plus the remaining amount which is left. So if I am if if I have assigned four hundred thousand to gold, then I'm only allowed to assign that plus the remaining amount of six hundred thousand. If there's nothing remaining, then we can't assign anymore. That's basically what, what that logic means. So let's build that and see what difference that that makes on our UI. So let's go there, let's go there, let's go there, and let's go there. Okay. So as soon as we hit a million, it stops. It's at zero. Okay, so we have achieved what we wanted to do. However, this is an issue. 
especially on a user interface level or visually for the people who are using the system. Anyone who comes onto the system will notice that all the sliders are in the same place, but the values of which they represent are not the same, okay? And this is a um, problem because if you notice, if you notice here, the value of four dollars is longer than the value of two dollars, right? The sliders need to properly represent the amounts that they are assigned to. So how are we going to fix that? Okay. What we're going to do is we are going to come here back, come back to our code and we're going to change one line or rather we're going to add one line to our slider. Okay. So bear with me as I write this line of code. So I'm going to say style and I'm going to say width. Okay. The width is, okay, then I'm going to say, I'm, I want a percentage. So obviously I need a hundred and this percentage, I'm going to get a percentage of the amount that's remaining, okay, divided by the total budget. Right. So what exactly am I trying to, uh, to achieve here? So I'm, I'm playing with my width property here because I want to scale my sliders to be proportional to the amount that is assigned to them. So I'm using a percentage to say, if I've assigned half of my total budget, then I need to scale my slider to fit half of its total width on our screen, okay? So I, I know that might not be clear right now, but let me actually show you what, what I mean. If I were to, re, to refresh this and I assign, let's go maybe halfway, okay? Or just about then let's start assigning the other amounts, okay? We'll notice that we have a bit of an issue with the scaling problem. And this is because this is, this is sometimes due to the, um, to, to the way that, that your um, system is, is configured onto your screen. So basically what we're going to do here is this. We're going to say, we're going to have an int key here. And then, so we're going to do that. And then we're going to add this there. And then we're going to add another one over there. This is just to configure the amounts that we have the percentages that we have on our UI. So let's come back and run this. And then we shall see it trying to appease. Wait, let me, did I build this? B. Okay, let's build that one more time. And then we will see that that's exactly what we were trying to do. Okay. Actually, there seems to be a bit of an issue we have. This is... Is this happening? Okay. Let's just try and fix that real quick. Okay, let's actually have that. It's actually not going as the, right now, but because of time, I'm just going to move on to our next step. Okay, and 
we're going to add a save button over here. And this save, um, what it's going to do, it's just going to allow us as the user to save the, uh, the values that we have for each slider, okay? So we have remaining over there, and then we have the, um, more than zero, and then we have that, have the save, let's fix this. And then we're gonna close that out for us. So basically I'm having, I have a button here, and what this button is going to do is it's going to be disabled while the page is running. Only when our remaining budget comes down to zero, that is when we, this button is going to be enabled. So let's actually run that. Let's actually do a test and see what will come up there. So let's come here, let's refresh the page. And then what we'll see is we have our button here and this button is disab disabled. However, when we assign our total budget, you'll see that now our button becomes enabled. And that is exactly what we are trying to go for in that instance. And then the save button can, you guys can configure that to go anywhere. This can go to um, a JSON file, an external database, external data source. It doesn't really matter what you do with it. But basically that is what I was trying to do with this, um, with this app. So I think I figured out why this was not working. I spoke a lot about percentages, but I didn't actually add a percentage sign. So let's go back and run, and then we will see once we run our app, it should work the way we want it to work. Okay, so we have half, about half, about a quarter there, um, about the same there, and now, as you can see, the size of the sliders are, pro are proportionate to the amount that we have assigned to each thing. So someone can come and look at this UI and see that this is obviously more than these other two. So this is basically Blazor in a nutshell. We're able to work with UI events we are able to add c -sharp code and specialized Blazor events that would otherwise would not have worked unless you use some form of JavaScript. Now, I just wanted to ask, uh, do we have just two minutes um, to show something else? Just wanted to ask if we Absolutely. still have a bit of time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. So one of the um, questions um, I saw in the chat was, can we, cre can we use Blazor to create a progressive web app? And the answer is yes. There's a tag that you click when you're creating a, a app which will allow you to use Blazor as a progressive web app. And just for your convenience, I've actually, for the sake of time though, I've actually cre created a, um, a GitHub repo here. And what I've done is, once you finish creating your app, okay, you are then able to publish it. So if I click on publish, right, it should give me various options like Azure and that sort of thing. And I've I've chosen to publish it to a profile, I mean to a um, folder. And this folder is then um, put into this location here. So when I finished 
I'm publishing the app, I can then go to my folder and basically, if I go to the, right, lots of clicks, but there you go. This is your Blazor app published into files. These are static files. And basically what you can do is you can just paste these in a Azure storage account, or you can paste these in a GitHub repo, which is what I have done here. I just pasted them here, and then I've obviously configured this repo for um, hosting. And then what you will see is my application hosted for free on GitHub pages, right? I'm not paying to, ho to host this. This does not um, cost me a lot of overhead. This does not take a lot of time. This is real c -sharp classes compiled into static files, which you can host anywhere and especially host on GitHub for free. Okay, so that's one of the many benefits of um, using Blazor WebAssembly um, for your apps. Okay, so let's go back here and let's actually not go to the beginning. Actually wanted to show you guys this page. Basically, if you go to this link at the bottom here, you are able to build this application for yourself. There's a step-by-step -step guide on how you can build this entire pizza app using Blazor. There's no JavaScript, and it goes through a lot of um, awesome features like authentication, um, geolocation, gRPC, and so forth. So if you follow this link, you'll be able to build this uh, website with Blazor from scratch. And with that, um, I would like to end this talk for 2M Day. And if there's any questions from the chat, um, then I would be glad to answer them now. Yeah, we got uh, one question, which is what language is span and div and Sorry? the like? Someone's asking basically what language span, div, all that. Oh, that is. Okay, what what language am I using here? So this is um, HTML, um, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, so this I'm, I'm, I'm almost second guessing my myself there. But this is HTML. So basically, what a Razor component is, you are able to use three pre predominant languages. It's C sharp, and then HTML and CSS. That's the um, beauty of working with Razor com components because if you come from a .NET or C sharp background, then you uh, you work with the tools that you are comfortable with, and everyone who works with um, web technologies probably has a background in in HTML and um, CSS anyway. So it, it's an added bonus for you. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, someone's yeah, asking about certificates. Um, they'll be sent to you after a week. They'll be handled by Omkar and Ajinkia. Cool. So, yeah. Cool. Thanks yeah, so yeah, much. Yeah. You'll get really it after awesome. a week once the event is done. About right. the certificates. And uh, thank you, Gomo, for uh, like, taking up this information, like uh, taking up this session. And it was really informative. Sure. People love, love the session. Sure. And uh, it was pretty much from the basics to from scratch to big, uh, like from beginner level to advanced. So it was really great. It was interactive. It was informative. It was a thank complete you, blend. You. Yeah. So that was a really great session. And uh, talking about tomorrow's session, it will be uh, delivered by Mustafa Saifi from India, and uh, it will be on virtual machines. So make sure to tune in tomorrow as well. And if you have any questions, you can ask here. Uh, Gomo is still here with us to answer. If any questions, just post it. Sure. Yeah, I'm just posting everyone's social medias in the description. Yeah, yeah. Just Salman down. just post the part two of the certificate uh, certificate form. Um, 
Sure. Yeah. People are asking for the form, so just post it. Here is the second part of the form for today. I post social medias in the chat. Bumbo, so, there's a there's a question from Mayuresh Bopi. It's a Blazer versus React, which is more industry relevant. Yo, go, go Blazer, because we love Blazer. In, in, <laughs> industry relevance. Um, I cannot answer that um, question because, um, one, I don't work with uh, React, but I've been told that Blazer is very similar to React, especially in the aspect of reusing components in your application. Yeah, so, I can take that, I guess, um, since I've used both React and Blazer. Sure. Uh, sure, so I, do. yeah, do. when I was working last year, I was had I had to use re, uh, sorry React, and it was like yeah, you use you use components, everything. You have got your JS JSX files, so your JSX is essentially your um, JavaScript, but you basically write it as HTML. In a similar sense, here with Blade. Oh, sorry, I think I'm just gonna mute David for a second. Um, um, so yeah, in, in a similar sense where you start by JSX in the HTML sense in uh, React, in Blazor you write your HTML sure. Razor pages and then you have your at symbols and you have your at code brackets where you're just writing C sharp instead of JavaScript. You still would use your JavaScript if you're doing animations and you still have that components feature, which, you know, uh, Romo was saying. So they're both component-based. I, myself, would prefer to use Blazor. I actually started shifting that company towards using yeah. Blazor. So <laughs> yeah, so yeah. I think, I think <laughs> it's for, for that purpose, I think, um, uh, let me even quickly talk about um, this Node.js React whole thing and just invite most of you that on 2nd July we have a session coming up I'm quite sure I might be doing something along React or Vue.js. I do not know. I'm not so certain, but yeah, you are you are uh, invited to that session. But the link, um, those of you joined yesterday and then our attending work, I'm sure I explained it earlier on that. All you just need to do is to go to your web app and then, you know, change the app settings. So you see some configuration, then you just change app settings to uh, from uh from i think yesterday was node.js right to start it up and to happen but i just wanted to call out that all the social media handles are available on that particular page so you can click on it and then um you would be able to um you know um, find all handles to every speaker here and all information about it i'm i'm quite sure that i will update it so that you'll get all the relevant information but follow Gomolimo, of course, he is the speaker here. Yeah, Gomolimo, there, there, there are a lot of positive comments also that are coming in. Like uh, Neha, Nehal is saying that's a really amazing session. Anuba, thank you, Gomo. Thank you Anuba, very much. Good session. Thank you. Everyone is like you were very clear on your concepts, and it was really a great session. People are actually enjoy they enjoyed the session, and they are also uh, thanking you, sending love for your session. So it was really great. Thank you very much. Yep. Actually, yeah. actually, there are some people who want to see your face as well. Like from the start, they also <laughs> like, why, why didn't you yesterday? Down the showed his face, right? So uh, there are people asking you, like, show your face. Show your yeah, Vilma's camera isn't working right now, unfortunately. But yeah, yeah, yeah. you can you can check out his face on Instagram if you want. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't know what to say. Just on that lead tech. LeadTechGlobal.com site that we created. Please put the handle in the chat so that they can easily click on it. But it, had they not enjoyed this session, I'm sure all of them might have left before you even realize. See, our 53 people are still there watching yeah. and listening to what you are saying also, right now. Also, so everyone, it's a plus. You actually did so much. Like, just leave a like on the session. If you love Gomo's session, so please leave a like. That means a lot. Yeah, click on the like button. And also the subscribe button. And if you want to become a Microsoft student partner or any other technology you are looking for, I'm quite sure we've covered over 60 or 50 technologies so far. So just check it out. Check the channel. You'll find what exactly you are looking for. And um, yeah, we all have our social media handles on the website. So just click on it to subscribe to our various channels and also our Twitter handles and all this stuff. Um, it's been fun. I would go mute now. Um, follow me <laughs> up, that would be anywhere.
<laughs> yeah, yeah. Check out, check out uh, Dawi's channel. Check out Sunda's channel. Check out Homer's Twitter. Everyone's channel. We got a drink here, and we got uh, on car here too. Also, do check out my channel as well. I'm Salman MKC. <laughs> I'm doing internship advice videos every single week, so my next is hopefully yeah, tomorrow. Yeah, Salman. All, so all the social handles links are given in the description, so please check it out. Yeah, cool. Thank you, everyone. I uh, hope you enjoyed. Do come tomorrow, and uh, we'll we'll have um we'll have uh, another talk, and we have a whole playlist. So this whole week, it will it will be you know running every single day up till Saturday. We have an event. Awesome. So even today, we're having another <laughs> release, which is the Gold Sudan Partner talk the the next episode so hopefully that's you enjoy great. that that's, that's great we'll see you all tomorrow yeah cool thank you everyone um yeah that's take time. care Gomu, you want to say something Come yeah on. just um thank you to um, everyone for um, watching and thanks for giving me the um, chance to um get to speak about some of my favorite technologies Pleasure. It's a pleasure to have you. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone.